to the revised recording of the instructional video accompanying the up-to-date ICP calculator for analysis uh, that uh, we put out through Captivate Aquaculture. This is Chris Wood speaking, uh, owner of Captivate Aquaculture. Many of you may have been using our analysis tool for some time uh, to help you uh, determine what sorts of modifications need to happen to your water chemistry according to the output uh, from an ICP analysis. This calculator has undergone numerous iterations over the last at least 12 months and I've been very fortunate in that a number of individuals have um, taken the time to communicate to me their uh, wishes for modifications that are made to this file in order to become more useful for them. And I've done my best to incorporate those recommendations and so this uh, file is uh, now available. This is, we're at the end of May 2023. If modifications beyond this are required, I don't anticipate that they are going to be particularly substantive and so this video uh, should go ahead and address all of the uh, use questions uh, that may exist. The, the, the value in this tool, if you have not used the tool in the past or if you've not viewed the, um, the, the, the outdated video, is that it takes the analysis that you have received through your ICP provider and it compares the values that have been reported to a standardized seawater sample that is standardized to the salinity of your sample. So if you are, for instance, um, running a system where your salinity happens to be 34 and your calcium value shows up as 385, normally the inclination for certainly reef aquarists is to look at that value and uh, feel that it's low, it needs to come up. In actuality, at a salinity of 34, that calcium value may not be particularly low. It, it probably is a little bit low, quite honestly, for the sake of this example. But the, the bigger point here is that it's actually quantifying the values that you're receiving against a known seawater standard. Why that's relevant is that there is something in, uh, in, in oceanography called the, the rule of constancy of proportions, and it, it applies mostly to major uh, ions. And in a closed recirculating environment, ions that in the open ocean would behave conservatively don't necessarily behave conservatively because you have, in many instances, uh, a, a greater rate of uptake than you do input. Calcium would be one of those things. Um, but uh, the relevance to the standardized value is that the organisms that you're maintaining your systems would be, main, would be exposed to um, maybe slight variations in salinity, but the proportion of the elements that are present that make up the vast majority of the uh, ions in seawater, they're going to be relatively consistent. Those those ratios are consistent. Again, in the open ocean, which which we're going to say is the ideal set of circumstances. Uh, so, as opposed to receiving results from an ICP provider wherein they state this value is high, this value is low, what what this tool does is a, it provides you um, actually the, 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 the quantified um, measurement. Is it high? Is it low? By how much? If that's all you're interested in and, and you just want to see how your water would compare to a standardized seawater uh, sample at your salinity, then this, this tool spits that out very quickly. If you are wanting to modify the chemistry of the water then there are um, tools within this file that will enable you to go ahead and do that. Now, those are all based on isolate solutions. 
And um, if you are using uh, another manufacturer's solution, then you would need to um, go to them and, and ask them for dosing recommendations if that information is not readily available. So when you open the file, and this file, by the way, must be emailed to you now. It is not available for download off of our website. The reason being that it is um, uh, being saved in a binary format, an Excel binary format. And I'm doing that because I was receiving a number of these uh, files back from clients where they had converted the file from an XLSX format to a numbers format and numbers removes all of the safety precautions that we put in um, a lot of these calculations are very complex I want to make sure that what I'm looking at on the screen reflects actual values that are being calculated it's very easy for someone to look at a cell keystroke it and then all of a sudden a bunch of stuff downstream gets um, impacted as a result of that so if you would like to use this file, you're going to need to use some sort of um, application, Excel or otherwise, that can read that binary file. I don't believe numbers will do that from what I have read. I apologize for any inconvenience, but that's uh, how I'm going to leave it. Uh, so you uh, will need to go ahead and use Excel or something along those lines to utilize this tool now. And again, it must be emailed to you. And the reason that that's the case is just because our, um, our web platform does not play nicely with binary format Excel files. It, it's, it's not possible for us to go ahead and put it up there to download. So when you open up the file that's been emailed to you, this is what it's going to look like. All the values are going to go ahead and be zeros. You will enter your name in this field. You will enter your system volume, net system volume in gallons. You're going to enter the number of days until the next ICP is uh, due to be run. And then you're going to enter all of your values from the ICP that's in your hand or on your computer screen in these cells. Please enter an alkalinity value. You don't have to. But if you do, then the calculated salinity value that all of the values that we're going to see are, are working off of will be just that much more accurate. You don't necessarily need to enter your water temperature or your specific gravity unless your ICP provider does not uh, provide you with a value for chloride. If you um, happen to be working with someone who doesn't give you that chloride value, then I'm going to need the water temperature and the specific gravity in order to um, determine the salinity of your sample so that I can go ahead and calculate a chloride value. It will not be exactly precise, but it will be very, very close. Um, so you will enter all these values in. I'm going to show a couple of examples of this going forward. However, for the moment, you will then go down to this analysis tab. And I'm going to show you a live example in just a moment here, which gives you the, the overview. So let's go ahead and bring that up. This is an example. These values are just arbitrary that were entered in. And uh, one thing that I should mention, if your ICP provider happens to report values of trace elements in micrograms per liter or parts per billion, you must convert those to parts per million for this calculator. Where this becomes a problem is that if you enter in a value for something like iron and you put it in as parts per million, it's going to be considerably higher than it actually is, and it's going to show that your concentration is probably over by something like 300,000% or some, some crazy number. It's not uncommon for me to see that come through. So uh, in order to assist you with that, Let's say that, um, uh, that the value is reported as um, 5 parts per billion. You're going to enter a 5 up here. It tells you what the parts per million is. Wh whatever that, um, that uh, ion happens to be, um, you know, let's say that it's, that it's um, cesium. 
you're going to enter 0 0.005 here. Okay, so that's how that works. So you've entered all your values. You're going to go to the analysis tab. The analysis simply tells you are these values elevated or are they deficient relative to that standardized seawater sample. That's all. That's all this tab does. This value here that I'm showing, 33.6, that's a calculated salinity of the sample that includes the alkalinity that was entered. If I zeroed that alkalinity on the first tab, this value is going to change ever so slightly. It's going to change by, by a small amount. This table uh, shows you here if your values, as I say, are deficient or if they're elevated by how much, whether you are concerned by the degree to which something is elevated, that's entirely up to you. My recommendation is to try and keep things as much as possible within 20% of the natural seawater value when we're talking about um, uh, elements that are critical to biochemical processes. We're talking about elements that are known to be potentially toxic once they reach the natural seawater value, then the recommendation is to maintain those elements in a deficient condition. You can see here in this particular instance, aluminum is re being reported as deficient by 100%, which is um, due to the fact that a, a value of zero was left in that field on the first tab. So. Again, you've entered in all the values here. It arrives it pulled into this analysis section. If you're not dosing any of our uh, supplements, you don't need to do, you don't need to know anymore. Uh, this is this is as much information as, as you really need um, out of this calculator. And so what it's what it's done for you is just told you um, by how much uh, are the various values different than that standardized seawater sample. Now, if you are interested in increasing the concentration of any of these uh, critical elements that are being reported as deficient, we're going to move on to uh, the next two tabs. Now, I'm going to do the manual dosing first. You'll see down here, there's two tabs, manual dosing and automated dosing. We go to the manual dosing tab. If you haven't been dosing any, any, of, any of our supplements, leading up to this. You're going to leave all of these orange fields as zeros. And, and throughout this entire file, wherever you encounter an orange cell, that is a cell that you can modify. You can go ahead and enter a value in there. No other cells can be modified by the user. They're all locked. So in this instance, we're looking at something where um, no previous supplementation has taken place. And so in this example, anything that shows up as being elevated is coming from some source other than uh, one of our supplements because uh, you as the user have left these fields blank. Presumably that means you're not dosing any of them. These elements are entering the system from somewhere else. If you do go ahead and if you have been dosing our supplements, then what you're going to do here is enter how much you've been doing on a daily basis. So as an example, uh, boron is, uh, let, let's, let's just assume that you have been adding uh, two drops a day. Enter a two there. And because in this case, boron in this sample I believe was elevated, the two drops that you're adding is not enough to offset what's already coming into the system through some other means. So it's going to advise you, you don't need to dose any uh, boron, any of our boron, uh, going forward for a while until that concentration has come down. Chromium is deficient in this case by 100%, as you can see uh, to the left-hand side. Now let's say that I've been dosing two drops of that. It's still going to tell me that I need to be dosing two drops because the amount of chromium that's going into the system is um, so 
minuscule, or what's required is so minuscule, and the concentration of the solution is quite strong relative to the amount of water that we're talking about here, that two drops is still going to um, bring us up. And you can see that what it's suggesting is just a slight increase in chromium. Uh, so let's look at another example. Let's say that fluoride yeah, uh, that has been um, not, not being dosed at all in as we see it with the zero, I'm going to enter a value of 10 here. And so even with the 10 drops, if that's what was being added, the condition still shows being deficient by 100%. Now, I, I want to caution everyone for this particular example of fluoride. Not everyone, not all the ICP providers report a fluoride value at present. If fluoride is something that uh, you're interested in dosing, but that you uh, don't have an ICP derived value for, then please contact me and I'll uh, give you a recommendation on how to begin dosing fluoride in, in what I would say is a safe and responsible manner. But uh, for this particular example, let's just say that your ICP provider did give you the fluoride value. It happened to come back below their detection level, which, which in, uh, you would enter a value of zero or leave that value zero in that first field. You've been adding 10 drops a day and it's not um, enough. So this is recommending that you bump that to 41 drops. That's the sort of thing that you would do over a very, very gradual basis. So to just pause for a moment and say one thing, you still need to have experience in increasing the concentration of elements in a reef system, because presumably that's what you are doing this for. And you're not going to shock the system all at once with one shot of a tremendous amount of, of a supplement. These things should be done gradually. As, as um, seasoned aquarium um, hobbyists know, gradual changes are so much better appreciated by the life in the aquariums than rapid changes. So please make changes on a very gradual basis. But at any rate, this is if you are dosing by hand, the manual dosing calculations. And again, all this information appears up here. Some general instructions. It's imperative whether you are doing manual dosing or automated dosing, that if you have been dosing any of our supplements, any of the Captivate or Reef Blueprint supp supplements in your system, these values that you're dosing need to be entered in, especially if you're planning on saving this file and emailing it back to me for me to go ahead and provide you with dosing recommendations. Because the first thing I'm going to say, if I open this up and see that nothing has been entered into these cells or the corresponding cells on the automated dosing side, I'm going to write back and say, can you please tell me what your existing dosing regimen is as it pertains to our products? It's not uncommon for this to be overlooked by people who are sending these files back into me. So uh, please go ahead and do that because I'm going to ask you anyway if these, if these values are all zeros. Before I get off of this tab, if you're dosing isolate MT, you'll see this white box up here asking you to refer to the white box below. Simply stated, if any of the ions that are constituent ions in isolate MT are above 200% elevated, then if any of them are more than 200% elevated, then I recommend that you change your daily dosage, whatever it is, to one drop per 200 gallons net system volume daily until the values are all back down below at least 100% of the standardized value. That may still seem like a lot. It's a minuscule amount, though, when we're talking about um, a closed system. If it's between, if you see that these concentrations are elevated less than 200%, but above 100, and again, that's any of them, then you should change the, the dosage of MT to one drop 
per 100 gallons. So if you're over 200% on any of these elements, you're going to drop it to one drop per 200 daily. If they are all below 200, but one of them or more happens to be above 100, then you're going to drop it to one drop of MT per 100 gallons daily instead of the 200 gallons. Why wouldn't you stop dosing MT entirely under these circumstances? In, in all likelihood, the <clears throat> there's still uptake occurring, and there is still uptake occurring the entire time that, that the system is in operation. It is up to you. If you prefer, if you see a value that's particularly high and you say, I I'm going to stop dosing MT for a while, okay, then stop dosing it. However, uh, you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, and, and the reason I say that is that if MT is the sole source of some of these elements, like if you're not dosing selenium, and to you selenium is, is an ion that you want to maintain, um, then um, selenium is entering the system through MT. If you stop dosing MT, then, then no more selenium is entering the system through that route. How you go about um, uh, going an alternative route is simply to start dosing selenium through isolate SE if you're going to use our um, individual isolate solution. Again, this is all entirely up to whether you feel like the element in question is something that is of importance in your system. That's a very uh, contentious topic and not one that I'm going to address in, in within the confines of this video. I get the sense from the number of interactions that I have with um, uh, clients, aquarists, that um, dosing a master solution through an automated doser is primarily what people are looking at doing, and, and that is simply because these dosers are ubiquitous these days, um, and um, people would uh, like to have the greater consistency, and very much so people are also busy and tend to forget that if uh, they need to dose the system by hand once a day, it may be three days before they remember that they didn't dose the system. So now you wind up with a, a, a system with high attenuation of, of these ionic values, and that's not uh, what, you're, what you're really wanting to do. So we're going to move to uh, the automated dosing tab. And the automated dosing tab is what calculates the master solution, and the master solution is, is calculated here in this section. It is based upon the ICP analysis, it's also based upon your existing dosing regimen. So let's say that you've been using our, our solutions for a while uh, and um, you've looked at the old, you, you've, you've been using the, the older versions of the calculator and the older versions provide you with the number of drops um, to, to put into your solution. The default values for those solutions are generally 30 days until the next ICP is run and one gallon. The volume of that solution is, is inconsequential here. What's important is that the number of days are accurate. So if, if you prepared 30 days worth of solution, you want to enter a 30 in here where, where it is now, or if you want to do 15, for instance, that's going to change the, uh, the calculated values, but I'm going to leave it as 30. Where do I get this information from here? Well, I would pull it from the last um, uh, saved version of the master solution that I had created. You will notice that this calculator incorporates major elements and some minor elements as well as the minor and trace elements. I received a number of inquiries from uh, consumers uh, asking whether they could combine the minor and trace elements uh, solutions with some of the major element solutions to, to further simplify their dosing. The answer is largely yes. The only exceptions are if you are dosing our bromide solution or if you're dosing, excuse me, not bromide, bromide's fine. If you're dosing boron or if you're dosing silica, then you cannot combine those in a solution with any uh, w of, of the major divalent cations. In other words, isolate 
Ca for calcium, isolate Mg for magnesium, isolate Sr for strontium. Those are not compatible in the same solution with isolate B, boron, or isolate Si. So if you're going to leave uh, calcium, magnesium, strontium out of the master solution, then you can incorporate boron and silica. That's totally uh, fine to go ahead and do so, along with all those other um, elements that are that are uh, that are being provided through the other I isolated uh, solutions. So here in the dark blue, this is what you have been dosing leading up to the point where you've just gotten this new ICP analysis back. And I'm going to open up this next file. Let's just say this is in the 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 continuation. This is the next ICP that came in, and the values are slightly different. I would use um, this uh, information here in the blue. Uh, that that's going to be um, assuming that I had uh, copied all the values in from here. So you'll see we're looking at this is the old on the left. This is the new on the right. Now I've entered all of these values and just for the sake of example and I've left calcium out and, and magnesium and strontium as you can see because I decided to um, uh, go ahead and uh, dose um, boron in this solution. So um, now it's a month in the, in the future I've gotten my next ICP analysis. I've entered in all of the values from the master solution from the original file into this new one. Just all I've done is just entered those values in. And what that does is that tells the calculator how much I had been dosing over the last 30 days. And it looks at the revised ICP analysis and it says okay now we're gonna compensate for what was going into the system it's not entirely perfect um, but it does give you uh, a, a, should give you a very close idea of what needs to be dosed so in this particular instance this is all fictitious again I've entered in new values here and so there have been some changes in uh, the, um, the, the the, the standard, how, how the standard is relative to um, my sample. And so that all gets calculated in and it provides you with um, now the new master solution. And the master, this master solution is the solution you're going to run for the next 30 days if, if that's the length of time until the next ICP. You will see that this cell here is locked. This 30 days in this particular instance is determined by you entering 30 days here. 30 days seems to be the majority of, of, of uh, the length of time that, that I'm seeing come back from the clients as far as when their next ICP is going to be run. So they generally will make 30 days worth of solution to go ahead and dose. Um, so you can still modify this field if you want to make more than a gallon worth of solution. If you want to make five gallons worth of solution, that's entirely up to you. Making a solution is relatively simple. You're going to fill the mixing container halfway, more or less, uh, of the total volume desired with purified water. You're going to add the individual uh, isolate solutions. You're going to um, s stir that up. You're going to add additional purified water until you hit the final volume in this case one gallon and uh, then you're going to make sure that that solution remains free of contaminants you're just going to uh, keep a cap on it or you're going to do something else to mitigate um, any uh, chance that something is going to uh, um, enter that solution and, and cause an unwanted reaction again you have this same field down here regarding isolate MT and just to touch on that again you can see in this particular example the I or the cobalt is elevated by 29,000 some odd percent that's not unusual by the way for that 
uh, element to come in with a with an extremely elevated value. In that case, what I would recommend is drop MT dosing down to the one drop per 200 gallons net system volume per day. Um, we have several here, in fact, that are uh, over 200%. Um, and again, these are just values that I entered in. So um, they're not off the wall in terms of some of the values that I've seen come through. That's the extent of it. This calculator is, I believe, straightforward. If what you're doing is using it just to determine how your water sample compares with standardized seawater, that just gives you the idea, what's my water look like relative to what this would be in the ocean? If, if my water sample, in this case, is 34.105, and my and I'm looking at the, at, at the big ones, calcium, you know, magnesium, strontium. Well, my calcium is slightly elevated. And this is funny. You know, at 413, it's one of those instances where it's, it's a great example. Someone would say, oh, your calcium is right on. Well, it's not. I mean, it's it's above. Is that important to the to the organisms in your system? No, not likely. That that's minor. Three point three eight percent is is minor, and there are plenty of examples of aquarists and aquaculture facilities raising coral who have kept their calcium well beyond three point three eight percent above uh, the standardized um, value. There, you know, you you hear about people keeping calcium at four at, at 475 or 500 or something like this for extensive periods of time. How much that perturbs the corals is uh, very difficult to say, but um, it does tell you, you know, that at the salinity of your sample, calcium would be 399.5, but it's 413 uh, in this instance. Magnesium, another great example. Your magnesium would be 1244, but the value that was entered here was 1320 and so on and so forth. So it just provides you with that piece of information. It's just there as informational. Um, the automated dosing aspect of it, again, copy values from uh, your um, previous formula into uh, this dark blue section here, and the revised values will come out in uh, the section on the right. If you're dosing manually, then those values will all change also according to the values that you entered as far as your existing dosage. So again, this does assume that if something is in excess and you report, you, you leave that field um, pertaining to that element alone, like for instance, cobalt is a great example here, elevated by again 29,000% in this particular instance. If you leave that field as zero, that you've been dosing none of our isolate CO. Well, then the cobalt's coming from somewhere else. So you're you're you can't negative you can't you can't decrease your dosage below zero. Uh, so that element is coming from somewhere else. You would need to ascertain where is that coming from. If you've been doing nothing but dosing isolate MT, then you've been severely overdosing it because there's not a tremendous amount of cobalt in that solution relative to the other elements that are there. And if you dosed cobalt, or excuse me, if you dosed MT and your cobalt number goes absolutely through the stratosphere, but something like iodide or molybdenum stays relatively close to the natural seawater number, then it's certainly coming from somewhere else and you would need to ascertain where that is and again these values are all arbitrary you know so they're not based on um, a, a sample that I've seen come through here uh, and that's the extent of it the admin tab that's over here is intentionally left blank there's nothing there that needs to be looked at and that's it if you have questions pertaining to the tool if you have questions pertaining to the interpretation of the analysis that you've received, please email them to me. I would much rather address a question directly than it be left to um, someone who I may not have a, um, a, a 
a shared opinion on a specific matter. So again, you, yeah, you are getting my opinion. You are based on, on my experience. Um, however, this tool was made with very specific purpose in mind, and it's been a, um, a, a considerable investment in time and resources to go ahead and not only produce this, but continually um, upgrade it. So I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to view this video. I hope that this tool is useful. I hope that um, through the incorporation of some of the information that's provided here, you see uh, positive changes in uh, the, the, the cohort that you're raising, whether that be an, an increase in robustness or color intensity, um, growth rate, so on and so forth. And I believe that's it. So again, if you have questions, please email them to me. I'm on Eastern Standard Time. I try to get responses to people within uh, 48 hours at absolute most. And again, that's lab at captivateaquaculture.com as uh, shown in the field there. Thank you so much for your time and for your interest in Captivate Aquaculture and Reef Blueprint. I sincerely appreciate